Today, we're recapping the 2014 neo-noir action thriller movie, John Wick. As usual, spoilers ahead, so be ready. Let's begin. An SUV slowly drives in and crashes into a wall. From inside the car, John Wick gets out gasping for air. He is heavily wounded and crawls to a nearby wall and rests his body. He puts pressure on a wound in his gut and carefully takes out his phone. Breathing heavily, John plays a video of the time when his wife, Helen, was still alive. He watches the video reminiscing of the days when they were still together and happy. Several days earlier, John wakes up on a cloudy day, a day he never wanted to wake up to, the day of his wife's funeral. John wakes up with her memory still intact in his mind, the day they met, the times they spent together, and until the day she took her last breath in his arms. She had an illness that eventually claimed her life, and all John could ever think of is, why her? After the funeral, John stays by the grave for a long while, grieving his wife. As he's about to leave, he's visited by his old friend Marcus, who had come to offer his condolences. They talk for a while, and John suspects that he was there to convince him to return back to his old job. But Marcus was truly just there to offer his support to his friend in need. That night, as John readjusts himself into the new single life that he was pushed into, a delivery arrives for him. It was a delivery requested by Helen to be done after she died. The delivery is a small beagle. Confused, John takes the beagle inside and on top of its cage finds a note from Helen. She wrote to him that she's made peace with her death, so she apologizes that she can no longer be with him anymore, and tells him he still needs something to love, and so she's decided to give him this beagle. John cannot hold back his tears as he reads the content of the letter. He takes the dog out from its cage and realizes that Helen has named the dog Daisy. John takes great care of the dog, and it too seems to have grown fond of the man. He sets up a small bed for her nearby him so that they can be close as they sleep. The next day, John realizes that he doesn't have any real dog food that he can give Daisy on a daily basis. He pours her a normal cereal for now, but promises to get her some dog food later. After finishing with breakfast, Daisy follows John on his day as he takes his Mustang out and the two head to the local store. On their way, he stops to get gas at a gas station. Suddenly, a noisy car stops by carrying three Russian mobsters, including Yosef Tarasov, son of mob boss Vigo Tarasov. While his accomplices head inside the shop, Yosef tries to strike up a conversation with John. He comes up to John's car and compliments it. Yosef then asks how much John would take for it. John gives one look and tells him that it's not for sale. He then proceeds to get in the car, but Yosef comes by the window caressing Daisy. Yosef proceeds to berate John in Russian, believing John won't understand. However, he doesn't know who John Wick is. John returns back the insults in perfect Russian. He then drives away. That night, as John is getting into bed, Daisy starts barking as she needs to use the bathroom. John wakes up and leads her downstairs, but there are two masked men already present there. As John stares down the two before him, a third man appears behind him and whacks John in the head with a bat. The three men start beating John while Daisy whines. The men start demanding the car keys in Russian, breaking apart the apartment. A scared Daisy hides under the table and whines until one of the men goes over to the dog and breaks her neck. The man then heads to John and pulls off his mask to reveal himself as Yosef. He then knocks John out. John later wakes up next to Daisy. She is already dead. He carries her and caresses her as he weeps over the one last remaining memory of his dead wife. After a while, he controls himself and takes Daisy out to bury her. Yosef takes John's car to a shop run by Aurelio. Yosef is pretty happy at his find and enters with the same loud music into the shop, boasting his newly acquired reward. Aurelio immediately recognizes the car and demands to know where Yosef got it. Aurelio is clearly concerned about the fact that the car was there, but Yosef goes on bragging about who he stole the car from and how he killed this person's dog right before his own eyes. 
After hearing this, Aurelio immediately shoos the goons out of his shop. Yosef storms out, saying he'll just take the car to someone else who's willing to do business with him. Aurelio punches him right across the face and throws them out. John gets back to his senses and gets a look around his house. He then heads straight to Aurelio's shop. He asks if Yosef came by, and Aurelio gives John his name to confirm that's who took his car and killed his dog. John asks Aurelio for a ride and heads out immediately. Later that night, Vigo calls Aurelio to ask why he struck Yosef. He seems a bit pissed at first, but when he realizes that his son had stolen John Wick's car and killed his dog, Vigo calms down. The tone of his voice goes from calm anger to disappointment and fear. Yosef returns home back to his father. Vigo calmly hands his son an alcoholic beverage before landing a solid punch to his stomach. Yosef doesn't know what he's done and demands to know why his father had hit him, but Vigo proceeds to slam another fist into his belly. Vigo finally tells him about his crime. It wasn't so bad that he'd stolen a car, but it was very, very bad that he had done so from John Wick. Vigo tells Yosef that John Wick was associated with him once, and had worked for him for several years. During his years as a mafia, John apparently had gained a nickname and an infamous reputation as the Boogeyman. Or rather, as Vigo explains, the guy they called to kill the Boogeyman. John had worked for Vigo for several years, killing hundreds of men with no trace whatsoever, up until he met Helen and decided to leave. As Vigo explains John's infamous achievements, a look of terror runs across Yosef's face. If John had set out to kill him, there was no hope left. Regardless, Vigo decides to call John up and try to resolve the matter. Elsewhere, John reaches back home and heads down to his basement. He takes a sledgehammer and proceeds to break open his basement floor to reveal a plethora of guns and some gold coins. Just then, he gets a call from Vigo, but immediately hangs up. There was no turning back. Having no other choice left, Vigo sends a team of 12 hitmen to John's home that night to kill him. John has no trouble fighting them, and dispatches all 12 of them with relative ease, fighting with the last few before stabbing the last guy through the heart. A police officer suddenly arrives at the front door. John seems to know the cop, Jimmy, and asks him if he's here because of a noise complaint. The cop agrees and then peers over his shoulder to see the body visible behind John. Jimmy asks if John is back in the business, but John simply replies he's just sorting some stuff out. John then summons a cleanup crew that he's done business with in the past while he had been working for Vigo. They seem to know it won't be the last time they help him. The crew soon arrives and makes quick work of the whole mess while John waits outside for them to finish up. As they leave, John hands them some gold coins. Vigo meets with Wick's friend Marcus and asks him to kill Wick, offering a contract worth $2 million. He also instructs his assistant Avi to call for others to take the job. Vigo visits Marcus personally to ensure that he accepts the contract to assassinate Wick. John arrives at the Continental Hotel in Lower Manhattan, where he stays while he conducts business. He notices that one of his old friends, Perkins, is there before him. The hotel actually leads up to a secluded club owned by one of his old friends, Winston, the owner of the hotel, who tells him that Yosef is at a club called the Red Circle. John immediately heads to the club Red Circle, where Yosef and his buddies are partying after gathering enough weapons to slaughter an entire army. He enters the premises and finds his old pal Francis standing guard. He points a gun at his head and politely asks him to leave. Francis is happy that he isn't dead and complies with Wick's requests. John then enters the premises and first kills two of Yosef's goons and advances through the club's lower level, killing several of the men standing guard for Yosef. On the lower floors, Yosef is enjoying a night of champagne and women in a fancy Russian bathhouse. As soon as they spot John, a shootout begins. John kills every hitman in his path, but he loses Yosef as he flees in a getaway car. In the fight, one of the men manages to stab him, but he's able to kill all of them despite the wounds. John returns back to the Continental Hotel. 
There's a special rule in the hotel that disallows mobs from causing a ruckus and fighting. If there's any killing done in the hotel by a faction, they will have to pay a hefty price as agreed upon by all the Mafia bosses. However, the situation is dire, and Vigo declares that if anyone is willing to take the risk and kill John inside the Continental, he or she will be given double the amount promised, four million. At night, Marcus gets to the roof of the building across the street and sets his sights on John in his bed. From the mirror, he sees someone entering. He fires a shot to warn John. It's Perkins. The woman immediately starts shooting at John as he expertly dodges her attacks. She tells him that Vigo has doubled the contract to $4 million if she breaks the rules of the hotel and kills him. John has his hands injured and finds it difficult to fight Perkins, but somehow manages to get her in a headlock and offers her mercy for information. Perkins reveals that Vigo keeps most of his cash and blackmail evidence in the basement of a church. After getting the information, John knocks Perkins out. John learns that his old friend Harry was in the next room and asks him to look after Perkins, offering him one of the gold coins of their organization. John goes to the church where Vigo keeps his secret stash of money and business files. He immediately shoots down the guards inside the church like a boss. John then forces the priest, who is only a goon acting as a priest to begin with, to guide him to where the vault is. After killing a few more of the guards guarding the vault, John then burns the whole vault to ash. Back at the hotel, Perkins manages to dislocate her thumb and to get out of her cuffs. She immediately subdues Harry and shoots him dead. Just as Vigo learns of the fire, he along with his goons are caught in a hail of gunfire courtesy of John. John manages to kill most of Vigo's men, but he's knocked out when an SUV rams into another and he's thrown to the floor. Vigo captures him, but doesn't kill him just yet. Who would? John is like 1,000 men in one and still a far more valuable asset alive. However, Vigo does wonder why he's gone to such great lengths for revenge over a car and a dog. John wakes up tied to a chair in an abandoned house. He tells Vigo that the dog was a gift from his dying wife and that Yosef took that from him. Despite his situation, John warns Vigo that he can either turn Yosef over to him or die next to his son like a selfless father. Vigo is amused and leaves him with his henchmen. Before leaving, he orders the man to suffocate Wick with a plastic bag and kill him. Fortunately, Marcus is watching from the next building, and he shoots one hitman in the head to let John take out the other. John quickly gets his gun and shoots at Vigo's getaway car. John manages to take out every single man inside the car, leaving only Vigo alive. With a huge gun pointed at his head, Vigo is forced to tell John that Yosef is hiding in a safe house in Brooklyn, and also to remove the contract from his head. Inside the safe house, Yosef is playing games and having fun with his friends. He thinks the whole thing is just some casual nonsense. Outside, the safe house is guarded by armed men, but none of them can stop John freaking Wick. He kills each one of the guards and storms the place, guns blazing. Yosef once again tries to make a run for it, but John catches him and finishes him off. After finishing his job, John meets up with Marcus and thanks him for his help. He tells Marcus that he has no purpose left now, but Marcus is hopeful his friend will still find his peace. Perkins sees the two converse from afar. In retaliation for Yosef's death and realizing the help that Marcus had given John along the way, disobeying the contract he had accepted, Vigo has his goons find Marcus at his home and capture him. There, they beat him until Vigo and Perkins shoot him to death. Vigo calls John and proudly announces what he had just done, just before leaving for a helicopter to get out of the city. While waiting for John to come to Marcus's home, Perkins is called to a meeting with Winston, the owner of the Continental Hotel. She meets Winston and four men at the Bethesda Arcade in Central Park. Winston tells her she's broken the rules of the Continental and her membership has been terminated. The four men execute her. John finds Marcus's body and sets off to take down Vigo. He finds the villains heading to the chopper and tries ramming into them with his car. 
Vigo makes Avi go out and kill John, only for John to ram into him with his car. Vigo then fights hand to hand in the rain with John. He tries to stab John, but to his surprise, John doesn't resist and pushes the blade into himself and breaks Vigo's arm with the knife still within him. He then grabs the knife again from inside him and stabs Vigo in the neck, killing him. We go back to the first scene where John is still bleeding. After watching the video with Helen, he's inspired to keep on going. He heads to a dog shelter and tends to his stab wound. He then takes a pit bull puppy with him and they go home together. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out.